Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hi everybody and welcome to the latest editions of the Live Birds podcast. Um, it's been a few weeks what with the World Cup and various other things going on and sadly we haven't got much good to talk about but we're going to try and get it off our chests. So uh, welcome aboard to our regular contributors Randy and Amy Kate and uh, let's get going shall we. So um, who wants to start on the shit show that was Brighton? Any volunteers? I can't hear Randy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't really want to go there, you know. Uh, <laughs> can we talk about something nice? You know, I don't know what that is regarding LFC at the moment, but uh, I mean, it, it's abysmal. It's it's bad. It, it's boring. It's it's slow. It's it's negative. It's it's what, why are they not doing what they used to be ish at the moment? Because I don't recognize our team. It, it I is, agree. It's, it's a hard watch at the moment, a really hard watch at the moment. And I, I do think, you know, in some respects, you know, the last, the last four seasons, particularly, we've been probably utterly spoiled. And yeah. maybe there was an inevitable drop off. Um, but this seems like we've gone from a drop off to a chasm, um, <laughs> in a match, in a matter of weeks. Um, and it's, it, yeah, it's, it's really hard viewing at the moment because I don't know, there seems to be a lot of, a lot of players that are just out of form. Um, I don't think we can ignore the injuries and I know we're not alone in that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's tough at the moment. Yeah. But it's yeah. not even, the injuries are there, but that, it's not even like a valid excuse because there's plenty of players that aren't injured that I, I just, we're not gelling. I mean, Tiago, for me right now, get him off the pitch he's just i think he's part of the problem instead mm. of the solution and well, if he was think... alone but he's not i mean there's three guys in the midfield that doesn't work and that means we haven't got a midfield well that yeah. i think that's a big thing is our <laughs> midfield is just not working together there's no communication um you know it's just it's not working I don't know how to fix it, but it's not working and we need to figure it out. And it, it's just, we're, we're getting destroyed in the midfield. It's, it's horrible. And we can talk it, about injuries, but the trouble is midfielders are not injured at the moment. So that means these are the guys we've got that's supposed to be the best ones and they don't work anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I think. So I guess, I guess it's sort of, you know, a, a year or so ago, we were talking about the fact that, you know, we were really sorry to see Ginny Wijnaldum go. And, Absolutely. um, but he kind of, you know, he went with our best wishes and we understood, you know, it was kind of maybe this was his last big contract going to PSG, et cetera, et cetera. We've, we've never replaced him and, and, you know, he in and of himself is, you know, a unique player in terms of what he, what he did for the club. But 
we haven't found a way to replace what he did for us, whether through one player, two player, three player. Um, and I do think so. I think it's a, I think it's a combination of things. Um, but but the midfield has been an issue for a little while, mm-hmm. and we know. And it seems to me that we, uh, you know, I I fully accept, you know, Jurgen Klopp says you can't fix everything through the transfer market. No, get that. But when there are gaping holes that you can see, then, you know, if you don't have a replacement or you don't have the ability to fill those gaps within your squad, then surely you need to go out and try and buy somebody who can um and you know you look you look at our you know you've got henderson who's what 32 or something you've got milner who's like 104 now (laughs) (laughs) uh, and still got more grit than some of the guys that are (laughs) but but you know you mix that with you know tiago who's who's sort of been injury prone since he's come to us and when you know when he's on it he's really on it mm. but but he's clearly not at the moment cater who as you know as far as I, say, I think Klopp's just lost faith in him because mm. i believe he's fit but i don't you know he's not really playing um you know curtis jones who's coming back from injury but a very different player and fabinho whose form has just dropped off a cliff mm. you know he's probably at the bottom of that chasm yeah. which about um so it's like they're all playing in slow motion it's it's what happened to our pressing game i mean nobody's pressing i mean we used to be on top of these uh stats now we're like either on 11th place or 7 16th place in running and pressing and and then you can't say that our identity is intensity because it, it's not actually shown at all on the pitch Maybe, yeah. maybe, it's, maybe it's Pep's fault. Maybe it's, it's the book. In the book. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually quite funny, you know, because when we say it now, we laugh. But people on Twitter actually actually believe it. It's oh the book. <laughs> we we can have oh a whole segment on, on the ridiculousness of of people's opinions on Twitter, and they Absolutely. think because they're behind the keyboard, they can. Oh, before we even got on this, I was. Yeah. Oh, jeez. It's a shit show. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah. Just don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's laughable. Oh yeah. But I mean, there, you. There, you know, there have been some, um, you know, some common common threads uh, over these games. So so one is, you know, we're losing the midfield battle. But but yeah. I, but part of that I think is also, you know, and I have been, you know, looking you know, quite closely at what the manager's saying and, and various other things. And he's, you know, when he talks about that, you know, the chances that we're giving up, um, he's saying part of the, uh, you know, part of the issue is, you know, we, we are going into challenge for the ball, but there's the, you know, so there's two or three players potentially going in. He said, the issue is, he says, if you don't win that challenge, he says all of a sudden it looks like there's nobody there because mm. you've got, you know, t- two or three players have gone in to win a ball that, that ultimately they didn't win, um, which, you know, potentially comes back to your point, Randy, around, you know, the intensity and the pressing. And we probably were winning more of the balls, um, you know, last se- or, you know, se- seasons before. And... Is is there was there an inevitability that that we were going to have a drop off in form possibly? Um, I guess it's that collective loss of intensity that that we mm. seem to be, you know, that I don't think anybody was anticipating to be honest. Um, and then I think you know you add that on with the um, you know the injuries and stuff, um, and you 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 know you start having a bit of a a bit of a perfect storm but you know so so the midfield is one the other thing is you know we we've always played with a high line you know and we accept that there is a there's a risk attached to that defensively 
but we, you know, we had the forward press. And when you talk about the fact that, you know, the pressing starts from the forwards and it starts at the front. So, mm. so you, you know. Are you that person who has everything? The coolest merch and those must-have fan threads? Well, over at our Anfield Index shop, we've gone that extra mile when it comes to pimping up your Liverpool collection. From our popular range of bespoke design t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies and hats, to our signature edition mugs, prints and coasters, all provided with fast worldwide shipping. We have something for every red. We also stock official LFC merchandise and are licensed with the Premier League and UEFA to sell official iron-on shirt badges and sleeve patches. As a listener to this podcast, you can get 10% off everything with coupon code AIPRO10. Just head over to anfieldindex.shop or find us on Etsy by searching for Anfield Index. We, Mane leaving has also had um, a big impact in our view because I think people underestimated, well, not some people underestimated um, the, the, you know, how much of the press was potentially started by him. And I don't think that, you know, Nunes is not there yet. I think he'll get there, but mm. he's not there yet. Salah can't do it all by himself. Um, you know, and that was the other thing we had with Diaz and Jota. And Diaz more to an extent than Jota, although Jota was much more selective in terms of his pressing. But But those two have been massive misses. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then, like I said, it just compounds it. Then, you know, you play a high back line. You've got, you know, Trent hasn't been playing brilliantly. Virgil hasn't been playing brilliantly. Um, you know, Robertson hasn't been playing brilliantly. And you, you add that to with a, with a, you know, a midfield that's not, that's not working with a, a front press that isn't, you know, hasn't got the level of intensity. And then, Add to that the fact that we we can't appear to hit a fucking barn door with a banjo at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, oh dear. You know, <clears throat> I, I, anybody surprised at how shit is going? No, it, but it's just like you said, it's all happening at the same time, and I think we've been quite good at replacing some people in the defence. I mean, look at Pronate. He looks like a star playing World Cup. He comes back to league, but he looks like he's off the rails of him as well. I mean, he, he doesn't look like, like he could do anything. And I think it is because the whole team is just not connected. And we got loads of forwards. I mean, we bought forwards and forwards and forwards in the last five years. Except Thiago, we haven't bought any midfielders in five years. I mean, either you get them from your own youth teams, mm-hmm. and I think we've got some brilliant guys coming up there, but then you have to trust them and play them. So he doesn't, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to question Klopp now because he's, he's always been brilliant since he's made this, you know, he made this new team coming up and he was always a, a, a a work in progress and then we got there and we won everything and now he has to do it again and it's like he can't separate uh, his sort of the love of all the old plays that made everything happen it's like he can't say goodbye to them in a way and he's, he's too sentimental and too human which is normally something I really value but right now I want to see him going so this youth player is actually better than Hendo at the moment. Let's replace him then. Let's just do that then. Let's just trust the young players, like he trusted Trent, for instance. So yeah. who is he trusting now then? I don't know. Doak and Budgetic get moments. But, I mean, Budgetic, I'd rather play him than uh, Hendo or um, uh, Fabinho at the moment, you know. At least it's great and, and pays and tackles, you know, you know. You see what happens when Dirk plays. I mean, it's all happening. I mean, it's, at least it's energy there. But it's like he trusts them a couple of minutes, but not more. And that means it's it's not a real uh, moving on. But maybe it's just me being too pa- impatient, you know, as normal. Well, I, I have a question that I, I kind of wanted to actually. Um, 
when we've had Ox playing, and I know he's an older player and he's going to be leaving most likely, and mm -hmm. he's always injured, but he's not right now. And when he is playing, he's doing good. I'm wondering why we're not using him, especially with the, the current situation more, and why, and maybe I've missed it because I thought Jones was back from injury. Why aren't we using Jones more? Because I think that he's has a lot to offer, but they keep putting in, he keeps putting in Kata and, you know, it, I, I just don't understand it. Again, I'm not a manager, and so there's things that <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to be I know all because I don't. Well, if, he, if it was three years ago, Ox would be the answer. But we have, Ox has actually played uh, some minutes the last three games. And if you saw his header in the Brighton game, I mean, yeah. uh, I'm sorry to say so, but it, that was not good enough. So I'd, I'd rather have a young guy in there than that could be better. But at the moment, it doesn't look like Ox is doing anything. And Jones, let's face it, he hasn't played and he hasn't had uh, trainings either to be at the level that he should at the moment. So I think we just have to be patient with him. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I think that, um, you know, Curtis Jones was, was on the bench, I believe. Um, he was, but he didn't get any play time. He's, he's just, you know, he's not long come back into training. So, you know, maybe, you know, I, I'm sure that, that Klopp will, you know, will start to see him over the, over the coming weeks. I mean, to be fair, you know, Oxley Chamberlain was the one who brought us back into the game against um, Brentford um, mm -hmm. before, you know, and and it, this is the frustrating thing. You know, if you look at the way we, we start against Brentford, we had good chances that we, you know, could and should and in normal circumstances probably would have put away um, yeah. before Brentford even scored. And that's that's part of the issue is is our you know our, i've no idea what the percentages are right but but i i would imagine our goal conversion uh percentage has, has also dropped into that chasm which is getting very full now i would imagine we've, yeah. <laughs> we've played i've all. got some stats for you good okay. since the world cup we've um, scored seven goals and conceded 13. Yeah, you see, that's that's not that's not us. Yeah, <laughs> not that's not the Liverpool that we know, we we understand, um, and we've seen over the last you know six years. Mm. Um, and the, like I said, you know, ultimately we you know we win as a team, we lose as a team. So it, it's it's collective failure. We're we're just sort of struggling to understand what, how everything sort of seems to have coalesced at the same time. Mm. Um, because that, you know, I had a hope certainly that, you know, we'd get a bit of a reset after the World Cup and we were having these sort of training camps in Dubai and, you know, we would, uh, you know, we kind of come out of the blocks, you know, as far as fresh as possible um as we could um to to you know and and sort of you know kick start our our season again mm. um and it, we we appear to have gone into reverse <laughs> yeah. like we've reversed the bus into the chasm <laughs> it's so weird isn't it because we we had this look into the uh, training camp and it looked like they were working on pressing and that one game against was it Milan or something. Mm. It, it, it looked like they were doing it. It looked like they were really back to sort of the pressing way, and it was looking so good. So I completely don't understand what happened. It's like we lost all confidence in the Premier League. Yeah, how many of the players in that game against Milan have, have we actually got on the pitch? Well, it was a lot of youth. Playing there, wasn't it? Batistic and uh, Carvalho and, you know, uh, some other guys as well. And they look quite good. And then when mm. we come back to Premier League, it's not 
they're not playing and the old guys play and it, it, it just doesn't look the same. No, I, I think, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, would, I would say came slightly out of the blue was the fact that we find Gakpo. Um, yeah, instead of a midfielder. Um, well, <laughs> he's what he is is really flexible. So he can play almost anywhere across the front. And I think he can also play as an attacking midfielder. He could play as a 10, but we don't use a 10. So that's where the confusion is. Maybe maybe this is part of what Klopp thinks is the next evolution of the side. I, you know, I don't mm. know I'm mm. in his head. But, um, you know, we, we have... You know, we work, we work through it at the moment. So, um, you know, we've got, you know, we've got no Jota, we've got no Diaz, we've got no Firmino. Um, we've got, um, Virgil out. We, we've just got Curtis on his, on his way back. Um, we've got. Hello. I'm here to annoy you. I'm here to annoy you into listening to more of me and more of others on EPL Index. We don't just have the Anfield Index stuff. We've got EPL Index as well, which covers the entirety of the Premier League. And we have three podcasts and a whole bunch of really good writing on EPLindex.com. The podcasts are my own two-footed podcast, which is every day at 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, covering the whole league. We have a Tad Predictable hosted by Tadiwa. You know Tadiwa, he does Anfield Index. He presents a Tad Predictable before every Premier League match week. And then Kevin DeVries and his crew on the EPL Roundtable, they're every week after the Premier League match week. So make sure you listen to everything we're doing on EPL Index and follow us there on Twitter at EPL Index. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think actually, because at, at one point we had so many players injured. Mm. I was, um, you know, I, I just, I didn't know what, you know, how we were going to get a, a, you know, a team pulled together, but, um, it, it, we appear to just have the long term ones now. Um, I, I think I'm trying to do this from, from memory. Um, so those, I, I do think going back to my earlier point that, that missing some of those players up front has really impacted the, the press from the front. But our biggest thing, I believe, is, um, is the midfield. Um, and I'm really, um, you know, I, I think we have to find a way to, to resolve that. And ju- here's a question for you too. Um, Arthur Mello, is he still <laughs> with us? Does he exist? Apparently. That, that's a very good question. I was actually thinking about that maybe a week or two ago because I <clears> saw <throat> something and I believe we're sending him back. Um, but it was just like wasted money. He got injured and then that was that like moment he got here and he, he's, technically still with us we haven't released him yet but i know that we weren't planning on keeping him and did he even play no did he actually have any playing time at all he played for the under 21st or something he he, because he got injured and then he was trying to get back so he's played for the youth team and then he's been injured again and now apparently he's getting ready and the thing is Klopp doesn't trust him at all, it, it looks like. So he's going to go back. But we still got him this spring. And looking at the team the other day, I thought, why don't chuck him in? You know, who yeah. knows? <laughs> well, you sort of, you start getting to the point where you think, well, how, you know, how much further, you know, could it be? Yeah, so how, I know. Much, <laughs> how, much, how much worse could it be in terms of some of the, the, the performances we've, we've already seen? I mean, at, at this stage, we're kind of doing our, our Wolves Brighton double header. Yeah. So we've got Wolves, <laughs> Wolves again in the, in the replay. Um, and then, um, and then we, we've got, 
yeah, sorry, we sandwiched those in between. Chelsea sandwiched in between them. Oh, but, you know, Chelsea have, you know, not in the great. Chelsea won today. They managed to squeeze out a win today. Yeah. Yeah. And they bought another player. Yes. I'll just give you another one, another picture that is really, really interesting. Mm. Uh, Chelsea just spent 468. Uh, not pounds, but uh, million. Pounds. The last six months, and Liverpool has has spent five hundred the last ten windows. <laughs> How is that possible? I mean, what are we? we are we playing in the same league? Are we doing the same sport? I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> wow, that's all I can say is wow. Yeah, I know, and and we know that. I mean. How bad has Chelsea looked lately? It doesn't. You don't solve and everything for buying random players for loads of money. I well, mean, was, but what, then again, it, could you just play? You know, one guy <laughs> that works. I mean, that would help uh, instead of fifteen like Chelsea have done. But now suddenly they they actually won the match though. So who did there they you play? Right. They played uh, Crystal Palace. Oh. And they okay. scrapped through a 1 0, so good for them. Well, so they're just at the same point as us, I think, uh, at the 10th or 9th in the league. So it's going to yeah. be. Well, there's, here's a stat for you. Um, and I believe they said it yesterday that we've conceded 21 goals and we only. Con- and the whole season last year was a total of 24. Well, there you go. Hmm. We're doing well, that, opposite football this year. Yeah. <laughs> that, that probably tells you as much as you need to know as any other stat. And the <laughs> is, without, without Alison, that would be even worse. Yeah, yeah, although he started to give away goals as well. That's really funny. Oh, uh, I get But he's he's probably saved us as many, if he not has. more. If it wasn't for him. Oh, it gosh. is one of those... It, it, it's a, it's a really strange thing. It feels like we're in a, yeah, we're, we're, we're running in a parallel universe where yeah. all of a sudden it, it feels like it's 2004 or something. Yeah. And after United are at the top of the table. Yes. Um, and they're doing very good. Wow. Well, I don't even want to go there. And also the fact that, I mean, finally City is not at their best. Yeah. This of was course. last year. We would beat them big time, but, but of course, when they do that, we even more crap. <laughs> yeah, wow. I know. Could you believe that? Last three seasons, like we've lost, we've lost yeah. titles with you know, 98, 97 points, and yeah. and this year, right, this season of all fucking seasons, all of a sudden they're they're mediocre, and we've got we've got we've just like I said, <laughs> we're <you> worse. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, you didn't think we could be that much worse, but apparently we are. Yeah. And I wonder if this is a bit like the, if we're having a version of Klopp's like last season with Dortmund, mm-hmm. not the, but I think we're anywhere near relegation trouble, but you know, we're just having, we're just, yeah. you know, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. Um, for, for a period of time. And, I don't know. It it's just it's really frustrate. Pardon me, frustrating because there there are things that we think we can see that we think are not simple fixes, but you know, clear gaps in the squad where you know we don't appear to be you know filling it or currently have visibility of what pl- what the plan is mm. to to. You know, to fill the gaps, particularly in terms of starting to refresh the midfield. Um, I think, I don't think the World Cup has helped, you know, if I look at, uh, Canate, for instance, I mean, I know he's only young, but, but, you know, he literally played, it, uh, well, not every game he could play in the World Cup, but he played up until the final of the World Cup. Um, mm. he was in the squad. He didn't come back. Um, I worry about Bobby Firmino. He appears to be getting ever more um, religious. Oh, and very I, much so. 
I don't yeah, mean that in a, in a derogatory sense, but but you know every picture you see of him on on any social media is him either you know praying or quoting the Bible or or doing you know, a speech somewhere, being, a, being at a pulpit or or something. And you know what? If if that you know if if that's where he gets faith and comfort, you know, fair play to him. But I just you know, I worry that that's, you know... His focus instead of football? Yeah. yeah. The, yeah where, where his focus it. is. Is yeah. he getting but, distracted by it is the question. And only that, he can answer that, obviously, but... Yeah, because obviously he's not he's not available either at the moment. So no, never, exactly. No, but, but I, you know, that, I, I just have a, I have a little worry at the back of my head about whether that becomes a, like you say becomes a distraction um but i think isn't he though i mean it's been talk about him going to saudi arabia or something or or going away somewhere and he, he is in contract talks at the at the moment and he hasn't really said yay or nay or whatever but i my feeling is he's on his this is his last months right. with us and I thought also that the buy of Gakpo was like, because he could play in a false nine. He could do, so maybe he's on his way in and supposed to be taught by uh, Bobby before he goes. And that's his last hooray. And I, I don't mind that, you know, because I mm. love Bobby so much. I mean, as a player, I thought yeah. he's been brilliant to us and he's, he's an artist or he's, he's weird, yeah. you know. But since he's become more and more religious and more more energy put into that and more and more injured, I thought, you know, we just have to find the next one. And maybe that's Gakpo. He's not an artist like Bobby was or is, but but at no. least he's got that. He can play from the cross, you know, and he could do, he could also do the midfield bits that Bobby's done because I think. We don't really appreciate how much he's done. He's been doing so much mm. defensive and midfield work. Yeah. And I think we can see that now when he's not around and not the rest of it works, you know. He was kind of like the glue and he was, he was, yeah. you would see, you know what? There was a quote that somebody had said, I do not remember where I heard it, but if you look, if you're looking around for Bobby, you don't really see him, but if you're looking through Bobby's eyes, you can see all of what he's created and, and, and what has happened. So he's a key player. He might not stand out um, as in like, Oh, look at him. He's quietly doing all these things and people don't notice him because he's doing it behind the scenes in a way, because he's doing all the passes. He's where he needs to be. And with him not there right now, um, mm. we're hurting. And, you know, let alone when he is scoring and, 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 you know, doing all his artistry, that's a whole other thing, but he's quietly doing a lot of things in the background that, he, or he was, and he's not there now. And I think we're missing that. We're missing, we're missing his, his skill and, and what he provided. Hmm. No, I, I don't, I don't disagree. I think, I think there are, there are some things that are a, a sort of similar thing between him and Wijnaldum. Mm. Um, in, yeah. in terms of the stuff that they did that maybe sometimes some people didn't notice. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we, we missed, you know, we missed that. Like I said, you know, right at the start, we haven't, we haven't replaced Ginny and, and there's different ways that you can do it, but we haven't successfully done it yet. Mm. Um, and but but yeah, in terms of Bobby, absolutely he is. Um, he's been the linchpin. I mean, he was here before Klopp was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know he's been here, um, and and what he's brought to the team. And I will be, you know, I will be devastated when he goes because mm. no nobody does madness like Bobby does madness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's exactly. He's, he's, yeah. You know, he's just, you know, he's back healing and he's no look goals and he's just, you know, passing. He's a joy to watch. He's just, he's a joy. He's an absolute joy. 
and you know, if he decides to go to Saudi Arabia, um, you know, maybe maybe he wants to link up with Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh no, I can't <laughs> imagine those two. They're not the same. Uh, well, you know what? I wonder. It, it could go two ways because we talked about his religion. Is he wanting to spread the word there? Yeah. Or not go because it's not there where he can. Yeah. Ultimately, practice. It could go one way or the other, and I, I mean, I'm literally, you know. Don't I can't me. see him there, to be honest. I can't I'd rather either. see him back in Brazil or, or going to Milan or something, you know. Where he can I practice. can't imagine him being in Saudi Arabia. No. <clears throat> no. It's... But can I just say a comment? Because th- about the fact that you ju- we are talking about both Bobby and Jeannie now, and it's mm-hmm. those two guys that does the work that you actually don't really see and maybe not appreciate too much. Because remember when Jeannie played uh, Bobby's role in uh, the 4-0 against the Barcelona, mm-hmm. afterwards, apparently Jeannie said, oh my God, if this is what you do, Bobby, I'm amazed because he tried to do his part and yeah. he and he actually did it very well, must have been so, you know, but at the same time, he he was like, wow, what are you doing? You're playing a front a front three and you're playing midfield and you're doing yeah. all these ins and outs and you're stopping it you 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 setting it you you know he was just going wow but he managed so well didn't he Jimmy, in that mm-hmm. match but he was apparently afterwards going what a part to play and that's yeah. it isn't it these two guys have pro- probably carried the team so much more than we knew until now when they're not there yeah well, isn't that what happens is you don't realize until it's gone? Yeah, it's sad. <laughs> Absolutely. And and like I said, we are, you know, probably, you know, at the start um, or in the early stages of the, the next iteration of what this team will become. Yeah. Um, and clearly, we, you know, there are going to be a few teething problems along the way. Um, yeah. as, 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 you know, clocks trying to work out, um, what the hell's going on, um, and what, you know, what he's trying to do and how he, you know, how, how he evolves that team. I mean, one of the things that we haven't really touched on is, um, you know, all of the, the, the various rumors as well. And I know we, you know, sometimes we, we just ignore them because, you know, there's, there's no actual, facts behind it but the various different you know consortiums or names that have been uh, mentioned about people potentially you know holding their hands up to take a stake or, or potentially buy the club yeah yeah mm. um and you know there's you know various rumors around you know another qatari investment fund Yes. You know, potentially interested in, uh, in us, um, and all Man United. And they, like I said, I don't know how much of this is paper talk, um, versus, you know, that whether there's actually serious interest and, in, and how we would feel about that. Because I think, I think we, I would expect FSG to think really, really carefully about who they would either want to get. get or who they would want to, you know, sell out to, um, because I think it would have a, I think it would make a big difference to to Klopp as we, mm. Um, mm. or, and not just Klopp. I mean the fans as well. I I don't think Liverpool is a normal club uh, that you can just buy. <laughs> I think it is a. A much bigger concept. It's a town. It's a city. It's people. It's it's politics. It, it's uh, a society yeah. in a completely different way than you know buying Manchester City. I must. I mean, I, this probably sounds weird, but to me, it is a different thing. It's not just a, a purchase. It is something else. So I don't know. And and as you said, I, I hope that. That's what FSG thinks about when they're selling. On the other hand, if they are giving the money they feel they are, you know, should have, 
and the people buying it say, you know, we're going to uh, respect this and that. We're going to put money into the business. We're going to continue your hard work. What can they do? They're probably going to sell. Well, well, they were never going to be long term, were they, Amy Kay? I mean, as in, as in, you know, but well, I don't know. You say what you think. No, no, no. Say, say, say what you were going to say again. Well, all I was saying was, I, I when they bought into the club, I don't think anybody anticipated they planned to be there forever. I suppose is what I'm saying. Hmm. Well, I don't think anybody plans to be there forever. But and and this is just my opinion. Um, being an American and going through the hell that we had with the prior American um, owners, it was scary because nobody wants, like, we don't get credit um, as Americans, like we don't know football or whatever. So we're already, you know, we're already kind of digging ourselves out being American owners in the first place Mm -hmm. or no support or whatever. So we already have that reputation. And then um, Hicks and Gillette, really made that worse so when there were talks of who was going to take over and then fsg came up came up and ended up being the owner yes i actually was happy for two reasons Mm -hmm. i felt like okay this is our redemption to show that america does know what they're doing and we do have you know they're not all like hicks and gillette um Mm -hmm. but at the same time i knew this particular group because of what Boston Red Sox meant to the city of Boston I think yep. they would get what it meant for the city of like it it kind of I don't want to say transfers over but there's this parallel with it now they've made yeah. mistakes and they've done stupid things and I don't think people get that you know because again American business is different and but every time they have made big mistakes i'm not gonna like deny that they okay they hold their head hands up and they're like all right let's fix this you know they don't yeah they, they do try to listen and then of course i mean the super league was the fact that they even got that but they're using the business brain i'm not justifying mm. it but they they saw it i think in a different way because if you see the leaders it was american owners it was united it was it was liverpool it was you know it was because they don't always understand sometimes or they forget that that it doesn't work the same way in america that it does in other other parts and now we have the board and the spirit of shankly so they don't have the same control um they have to listen and the moment that something happens spirit of shankly is right on it okay explain this you know so they do have people watching and and i really think that you know what they've done i mean we've got We've got a new main stand. We've got Annie Road almost finished. They've, you know, they've poured so much money into this. And mm. and I think people forget that and all this FSG out. Like, well, what that's just the, stupid, though, isn't it? I mean, oh, it's absolutely ridiculous. And the protest is, and, and oh, we're going to have a protest this weekend. And it's, 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 it's a joke because it's, it's people that don't really, they, they're not, it's like, there's a British thing that you guys say all the time is there, we say throwing a tantrum, but you throw all your toys out of the pram. That's exactly yeah. what it is. It's like they're trying to blame our problems on the field and the gelling of the team not going well and all, whatever's happening. It's not just because FSG isn't spending money. There's, it's so much bigger than that. They think, oh, we'll get new owners. Everything's going to be fine. And that's not the case. I really don't believe that. I think it's just so much bigger and it's just, it's yeah. frustrating. It's but really frustrating. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd rather have FSG than and some Qatari or Saudi spending money thingy bob because they're not interested in the culture. At least FSG have tried to, you know, be, I, I feel that they really, really wanted to be a part of the whole thing. And they wanted yeah. not to just do their own thing. They wanted to do Liverpool. And I'm so afraid of what's going to happen when they finally sell, because finally they're going to cash in. I mean, that's the thing. And and I, I don't think they're going to do it in the bad way. I mean, absolutely not. It's just that we don't know what's going to happen when they finally sell it. 
Yeah. Well, they eventually will because it's, it's, yeah. it's, everybody does eventually. You can't be forever. But the thing is, it's like, be careful what you wish for because mm -hmm. it's, it's like, yes, okay, nobody's perfect, but what they brought is so, in my opinion, they've done so much good. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like it's, it would, it would really, things would change and not necessarily for the better. And it doesn't mean because we, they get, you know, this, um, you know, I'm just going to say Middle Eastern owners because there's more than just, you know, Qatari or, or, oh. or whatever, but like, it, it's not this unlimited amount of money. It doesn't mean that they, everybody thinks that, that we just, we don't spend money. We don't spend money, but I don't think they want us just to spend money to, to spend it. They're more, I guess, um, cautious with their money. They're more frugal with their money. And I think fans want, just want money. They, mm, it's, 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 I don't think they really get it. They just, we, of course we want to win. We want to, we, we want, we want to win trophies. We want to be the best of the best. We want to, you know, go around saying, you know, nobody's better than us. But it takes time and it doesn't, you know, it's just, it's hard. Like everybody's saying, oh, Jude Bellingham is the, is the answer. But is he? Is he a great player? Absolutely. But one player is not going to change things. It, there's so much more. No, you need, you need the platform upon which Bellingham yeah. operates. Mm. And uh, so... Like you say, you know, we, we, we said many times with this pot, you know, I'm not FSG in any more than I'm FSG out. I think they've been decent owners. I think they've done some really good stuff. I think they've done some absolutely appalling stuff. Yeah. But with men, I, I think overall they've done a decent job. You know, they, they've not put, you know, so the only, the only thing I would slightly disagree with you on, um, Amy Kay is that they mm -hmm. haven't been loads of their own money they never have but that's not their model they yeah. um, you know they've given interest-free loans or they've done you know very various, various different things but in terms of the infrastructure the fact that we've remained at Anfield the fact that we've redeveloped the ground um you know like you say the Annie Road should be finished at the start of next season mm -hmm. um and, uh, you know, in terms of some of the, the community stuff that they've done, the fact that, that you know, w whether we think it's enough or not, with the, that they, you know, re-engaged with the supporters, um, you know, in a, in a different way. And, you know, that, you know, that the, um, spirit of Shankly, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, at least they are engaging with the, you know, with supporters groups, um, that, you know, like I say, that you know they've made a lot of missteps as well. But they, you know, they 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 said almost from the beginning it was about the club being self-sustaining, and I think that they definitely bought into the fact that we had financial fair play, and mm. I believe um, that part of them, you know, wanting to be involved in. The, the, you know, this European Super League is because they don't believe that financial fair play is fit for purpose. They don't, but they don't believe it's actually being operated or being governed. Because if you look at what's happened with Man City, if you look with Chelsea, yeah. you look now, um, Newcastle and the Saudis and what have you. I mean, the, the stats you gave us earlier around, you know, Chelsea has spent, I don't know, 400 million or whatever this year. I mean, how in God's name mm -hmm. does that fit within financial fair play we all know what's happened at man city with their you know their amazing sponsorship deals that all yeah. just and to, to you know generate from um you know qatar um, they own it themselves you know and have a value that that has no bearing at all on on yeah. you know reality but hey you know we'll we'll just yeah, we'll just sort of all, you know, pretend it's not happening. And the same thing, you know, PSG and all the rest of it. So I think that for, for their view was, well, if that's not going to, you know, if you're not going to, you know, run it on financial fair play rules, which is what we thought everybody was doing, 
then you know let us go and see how we could make more money now i think you know european super league is an absolutely terrible idea um and you know everybody protests about it but we have got that you know de facto by what they're doing with the champion league changes yeah, yeah. the irony of it is that you know that the, you know UEFA stood there and free don't know yeah we're protecting football are they fuck <laughs> oh, yeah not. you know and and that's what we've got now with the, with yeah. the you know with the changes to the Champions League and then you know you have a fucking idiot like Infantino oh. uh, at the, going on about you know I I feel Arab I, I feel, feel gay, gay. I, oh my god I am I am what I don't know whatever else he was banging on about I mean it was it was bizarre it, you know there's been some weird things that have happened in the sporting world this yeah. year that's probably one of the one of the more odd um occurrence and you know anyway it's so also what, what's the extent you know like does he even believe that or he feels like that's what what you know i don't know it's just he was we, making we a up. point uh, he yeah. was sort of playing theater at yeah. what everyone else was doing and uh it's it just absolutely oh, i can't don't get me started i just hate the whole point of it and as you said i mean the champions league like uh, psg and the guys uh ufo or whatever they call themselves that stood by and looked at the super league saying oh this is so wrong yeah what they did was turn around and do the same thing just a little bit different and then they say they protect football they're only interested in their own interests and their own way of getting those money and it is so sad and i'm thinking about i mean that and at the moment now who's going to buy liverpool and how it's all looking out if you look at it from afar the whole Premier League thing about with all the money business. I'm just looking out for. So, what team are we supposed to uh, start to um, uh, to look out for? Um, am I going to go to Liverpool to watch Tranmere in the future? Maybe. Maybe we should all meet up doing that in the future. <laughs> because this is just like looking mad at the moment. I'm sorry to be a bit negative, but you know. Looking at it, if you manage to distance yourself for a moment, it just looks crazy. It's not about the things that they actually love, you know, the fan culture and, you know, uh, the football itself. It, it's just so crazy. Mm. Well, football, you know, ultimately this is the, the way it's going. You, you inevitable, there's an inevitability, I think, that I don't need a VPN. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> this is what I used to tell myself before I hooked up with LibertyShield.com. Not only is my home internet now fully encrypted, but I can now access all the websites I want, whenever I want, and do so from absolutely anywhere. As a Liverpool fan, I love to know I can now watch every match, regardless of whether it's on UK TV or not. My Liberty Shield VPN makes sure nothing is blocked and guarantees me super fast streaming speed throughout that match. You can get connected right now with their software package, which includes a 48-hour no-obligation free trial and instant access to their apps for Apple, Android, Fire TV, PC, Mac, and Android TV. Or go a step further like I have and get one of their pre-configured VPN routers. These small but powerful devices allow you to easily connect every device in your home to VPN, making it the perfect solution for smart TVs, mag boxes, and games consoles. Visit libertyshield.com today and use coupon code AIVPN25 to get 25% off at checkout. You know, football will eat itself because yeah. it gets to a point where there's no more space for anybody to play any more games. I, I've no idea how they think these additional hundred games or whatever they are in the in the Champions League are going to get fitted in. So you either have, um, you know, it, it, you you either you know dump a domestic competition anyway. The different things you think, but ultimately the reason that people um, watch football is because they want to see the best players. We are in effect going to be rinsing. The best players 
because they they will they will be exhausted and uh, and then the product in inverted commas becomes inferior so then people stop watching because they go well why don't want to you know why do i want to watch this these these people are crap um yeah. and and you know we we don't even you know we don't mm-hmm. even have a winter break in the uk right people go on about tradition and whatever fine but they managed it in scotland they don't you know you still have your christmas fixtures and then you get a break in january hmm. and i know that they're you know they're they're trying you know trying in the season but you know there are things we, that should be put in place to you know protect the players because without the players you don't have a game and without yeah. the game the sponsors don't want to pay for it so you know you carry on rinsing the same people and doing the same things you you will end up killing the golden goose and and randy to your point yeah it you start to you know i will never stop loving liverpool football club and at this moment i don't plan to stop watching them but you can also see that there comes a point with you know all of the stuff we talked about before you know the the ticket prices the tv kickoff times mm. the you know yeah. the lack Notice the fact that you know, particularly in the UK at the moment, we can't run a fucking rail service to enable us. <laughs> to get in there. Um, yeah, you know the the it just become you know the the fact that the club make making it more and more difficult for for you to be able to um you know get hold of tickets and do various other things you know under the guise of you know supporter safety and this that and the other. Um, but we, you know, again, we also know that it, it is all about, you know, they want to know who's, who's got the tickets and what have you. They're, they're taking away all of the flexibility that mm. we, we had as supporters, you know, and, and not giving us much back for it. Um, yeah. and that's, a bit, but again, you know, that's partly because, you know, ultimately they, they see a changing of the guard in, in the mix of supporters and they want, you know, they want the next generation. They want the people who are potentially going to go into the club shop and spend a couple hundred quid and all the rest of it. Um, or going to go down to, you know, going to go to the cop bar and spend their money there. Um, and, and that's, and that's fine on one level, but, but the culture hmm. has been, you know, built and developed on the back of the people that they're, now not that interested in having in the ground anymore so it's you know you you know like to your point amy kate be careful what you wish for yeah, yeah. well do yeah, you indeed. think that i i understand that they should know who's in in the stadium i i don't have a problem with that and i have a hard time with the way that you know there's these people out there that are selling our ticket and it's not just us it's it's all sports that you say, we'll just say yeah. the average wow. ticket is about 30 pounds okay or 40 pounds we'll just go with yeah. that and yet somebody like me that if i didn't have access to my official liverpool sports club and had to go you know over and get a ticket and it's a couple hundred pounds you know mm. for a regular game is ridiculous because people are trying to yeah. make money off of it and and when yeah. they're going to be you know thousands of pounds you know when it's yeah. a championship i get why the club wants to lock down on that and i'm okay with that or oh hold on i'm using somebody's dead dad's card you know yeah. that's not okay <laughs> either so i get that they want to crack down on that but it's not that hard that we should be able to transfer it to anybody we want you mm-hmm. just you know if you can't go hey do you want to go you yeah. transfer yeah. That'd be you you register yourself and they always know who's there. It shouldn't matter about who who's um who has the ticket. It's the fact that they know who or it doesn't matter who's going, it's that they have a record of who's going. Does that make sense? Like yeah. it's not that they don't need to make it that complicated or that difficult. And the, the person other, with a ticket should decide then. Because it's only one ticket, it's not like you can sell it to ten people. Right. And well, the other interesting thing, and it's a little bit different for official Liverpool supporters clubs and um, 
you have to live in, you know, just live in that region and whatever. And what they used to do before COVID in this new system, you had to show that you had a membership. You mm-hmm. had to buy a, a, either a full or light membership. So you're spending um, about $65 um, just to have the opportunity to have a ticket. Yeah. Not even guaranteeing that you're going to get it. And every person that's going had to purchase that, anybody that wanted it. And then you had twice a year that you could put it in, the first half and the second half. So it wasn't like you could go in, you know, the way everybody else does. And then if you were lucky enough to be awarded that and say, okay, here's your supporters club, here's your tickets, you had to prove that you were that and, you know, that you did, you basically had to pr- prove all this stuff. Now they've done it so that you just send an email. It's much easier, but it, I don't have to prove that I have a membership. I don't have to prove who I am because you just transfer an email. And it, so it's actually gone backwards of all the protections they want, but they've chosen to um, do this. And, and people, less people are buying memberships because they've realized, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. You know, it's just the way they're doing things is just shocking, you know, and and yet we can only get, I want to say about maybe 750 to 900 tickets per game. That's not even like a couple percent of what and, and they're adding more official supporters clubs. So it's making our pool even smaller and we're supposed to be important, but we're not like it's 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 really frustrating for all of the official branches that are just losing out and they're, you know, people are just, it's just frustrating the way things are being run. It's sad. No, I, I get that. I do. So, you know, we've, um, you know, we've covered a lot of ground um, today, mostly about <laughs> how shit we are at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and think about how we end on a on a positive note in terms of you know things can only get better. Um, you know, <laughs> we've got uh, clearly we've got the FA Cup replay, we've got the Chelsea game, um, and then uh, I think we play Wolves again. I think, oh, or, or if we get through Wolves, we play Brighton in the next round of the FA Cup. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's let's just just let's work on the premise that maybe maybe we're just having a really 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 bad January, and and hopefully you know when February gets here things will be better. Um, yeah, well, that would be nice. Me, <laughs> it would it would and, and the Champions League is also back in February, so we Yay. have we have with, have some fun. with Real Madrid. <laughs> yes, yeah, really looking forward to that at the moment. Do, yeah. do we know at this point <laughs> systematically if if we are too far out for top four or is, we're not automatic like we still have a chance to get top four right we have that to yes. play for yes okay good well is that is that the thing though do we need to get top top four to get into the Champions League or has that yeah. changed already we know um, top four or we can win it. Yeah, we either oh, win, well, of course, it's that one. Yeah. Win Champions League, or we have to be in top four. Yeah, because if you win, uh, no, we still have to play Man City again. We still have to play Man United again. We still have to play Arsenal again. We obviously yeah. play Chelsea. We still first to play. Um, we've still got um, Newcastle. Yeah, we still got yeah. Newcastle to play again. <clears throat> uh, currently, we still got you know you talk about people who are there. We still got Fulham to play Yay. again um so uh you know that's that's at least you know 18 points um up for grabs that we could take away from teams around us and i suppose the the other thing to think about is um and to make us feel better on a you know a wintry january day is at least we're not evertonians oh that's true right <laughs> <Let me keep. laughs> they are so much damage. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> no matter how so, bad it's going, there it could worse. be worse. Yeah. Yeah. It could be worse. It could be worse. You never know. Twenty twenty three might turn out to be our year. Yeah. Do, do you? Oh, think... It's just not happened yet. It's going to happen. 
it's going to happen. So, <laughs> on that note, um, <laughs> I'm going to say thank you for uh, joining me on this uh, bit of a, a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're thank- laughing still. That's good. We are. We are still laughing. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for uh, listening to us get it off our chests. Hopefully, we might have made you feel a bit better as well. Hopefully, at least we haven't made you feel worse. Um, and we will talk to you again very soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.